short calls, the short call option strategy. If you like getting hammered in the stock market, then stick around because this is the perfect strategy for you. Hey, Jim Schultz here for F cubed and live F cubed.com. And we just recently did a long call options video on Tesla, a long put options video on Nvidia. And so now what I wanted to do, I'll link those down in the description if you haven't seen those already. But now what I want to do is I want to flip over onto the other side of the option contract, talk about some short calls in this video, and then we'll do another video on short puts. So coming on down the shoots in this video, to set up our short call foundation, we are going to use an Amazon options example. So this is actually the Amazon option that we are going to use, and we are going to break down all the pertinent metrics that you see here on the screen. Now, maybe you've heard that selling calls, especially naked calls with naked, meaning you don't have any long shares to cover the short call. Like you might in a covered call is a terrible strategy. Well, there is some truth to that because first with a naked short call, you are exposed to unlimited losses. That's true. But second, you are exposed to an infinite amount of unlimited losses, which is also true, especially given the redundancy of that last sentence. Not to mention, I mean, you have a market that wants to go higher over time. So why in the world would you ever consider the short call strategy? Well, I want to answer that question. And if you hang with me through this video, I'm going to give you an answer to that question. But before we can answer that question, we have to back up a few steps and lay down some groundwork on a short call first. All right. So we worked through the long call basics, but the Tesla example, so I'm going to assume that you're good to go with that. So let's flip over onto the other side of the contract with the short call. And here are two things that you want to drop a pin in as we get rolling. First, Remember that options are zero sum games. So whatever one side wins, the other side loses and vice versa. This is helpful because if you understand how to work through long calls, then you're also indirectly working through short calls. Even if some of the logistics like buying shares, selling shares or assignments are a little fuzzy. But second, don't forget as you work through all of these examples, it's always best to think of the option contract from the standpoint of the long side, buying the contract from the short side or put another way that might be more appropriate here. The short side sells the contract to the long side. Okay. So keep both of those things in mind as we move forward. So now let's take a closer look at the call contract, especially from the vantage point of the short side. So remember that a call gives the long side the right, but not the obligation to use the option to buy shares in the underlying stock at the strike price before expiration. So just as we saw with our Tesla video, this of course means that the long side of a call contract is bullish on the stock as they benefit most. If the stock rises way above the strike price, and if the stock doesn't go up and the stock stays below the strike price, then the long call can just walk away without using the option easy enough on the short side. Things are a bit different. First, you want to recognize that if the long call holder wants to buy shares at the strike price, then he is going to be buying those shares from you, the short side of the call contract. So the long call buys shares at the strike and the short call sells shares at the strike. Now, of course, if this ever happens, this will not be good for the short call. We know this because the only time the long call will use or exercise the option is if the stock is above the strike price. So while the long call is able to buy shares at the lower strike price and then immediately sell them at the higher stock price, the short call has to do the opposite, buy the shares at the higher stock price and then immediately sell them to the long call at the lower strike price. Now the reverse will never happen, at least not in theory, where the long call uses his option with the stock price below the strike price. This would be great for the short call because he would be buying at the lower stock price and immediately selling at the higher strike price with the long call doing the opposite, buying at the higher strike price and selling at the lower stock price. That won't happen because it doesn't make any sense for it to happen. It doesn't make any sense for the long call holder to do that. He would much rather just walk away if the stock price is below the strike price. 
Okay, so obviously the buying and selling of shares is one key difference between long calls and short calls. Well, another key difference is, again, if it doesn't work out, the long call can just walk away. He can just let the option expire worthless. He's out what he paid for it and nothing more. The short call isn't so lucky. The short call has to stay in the contract and is obligated to sell shares to the long call at the strike price if the long call chooses to exercise his right to buy shares at that strike price. Remember, the short call gets hurt when the stock price rises above the strike price. So while the long call is bullish, the short call is clearly bearish. So if the stock falls below the strike price, then the short call isn't worried about the long call using the option as we just went over and he's happy. But what if the stock doesn't fall? What if it rises? Well, this is where the short call gets hurt and this would be the option not working out for him. In this situation, he can't just walk away like the long call could when his option didn't work. Instead, the short call has to stand ready to sell shares at the strike price if the long call ever exercises, just as we just went over. So as long as he is in that contract, as the short side, he has to stand ready to honor his side. All right, so I want to put some meat on these bones with this Amazon options example. But before we do, just like we did with the long call and the long put in the previous videos, let's lay down three guideposts that can be really helpful as we begin to break down all the different metrics in this Amazon options example. The first thing, your maximum loss is unlimited. There is no cap. There is no limit to how much you can lose because theoretically there is no cap. There is no limit to how high stocks can go. So you have to be aware. You have to fully understand that with a naked short call, your maximum loss is unlimited. Okay. Number two, your maximum gain is limited. It's actually quite limited. In fact, the most you can make is the credit that you collect on entry. The most you can make is the option premium that you pick up from the long side when the trade begins. And then number three, as we just went over a couple of times, you are obligated to fulfill your side of the contract if the long side exercises. You can't just walk away. You can't just let it expire worthless if the other side wants to use the option. You have to maintain your obligations as the short call holder. That doesn't sound too enticing, does it? I mean, you could lose a lot, you can only potentially gain a little, and you can't walk away if things don't work out. I mean, that's 0 for 3 in anybody's scorebook. So you might be thinking, Jim, I'm out. I am not doing this. And hey, that might be the correct move for you, but I would still encourage you to press forward through this video and the short put video, and even maybe some other videos on the channel, because your boy needs that average view duration, you might be surprised at what you find and unearth on the short side of the options contract. And then when you've gone through all four basic option types, and you've gone through maybe some other videos, you can decide what the appropriate next move is for you in understanding the world of options. So, all right, let's take everything that we've just learned. Let's take the little foundation that we've established and let's apply it to our Amazon example. And again, for the purposes of this example, just like Tesla, just like Nvidia, just like we're going to do Apple on the short put video that we've got coming on down the shoes too. Let's just assume that everything is held to expiration to make things a lot simpler. So here we are inside of the tasty trade trading platform. And first off, just as with the long call and long put videos, there are a million things to analyze on this image and I'm not going to cover them all. That's not even my goal. That's not my objective. Instead, what I want to do is give you a basic foundation for short calls to work from. Second, just to be super clear, this specific option was just chosen for illustration purposes only. I'm not saying this is a good trade. I'm not saying this is a bad trade. I'm just saying that this is a reference point for us to use to understand all the different metrics surrounding short call options that we can better analyze and understand. So if you look at the red card there overlaid on the P&L graph, that is our option. You can see we have a 185 strike call in Amazon expiring on April 19th, which is 50 days away as of today. And the option is selling for $3.45. So the first thing to notice is that with the current price of Amazon at 176, this 185 striked short call is starting off in a good spot. 
Remember, the long side of the call wants the stock price over the strike price. So as the short side of the call, you want the stock price under the strike price. So with how things are right now, things are off to a good start. All right, so let's pause right there. Right now, you've got the stock at 176. You've got the strike at 185. That's a really good starting point for you. Okay, what if Amazon goes even lower? What if Amazon goes down to 172 or 170 or 167? That's going to get better and better and better for you because you're increasing that buffer between the stock price and the strike price with the stock price being beneath the strike price. That's good for you as the short call holder. Okay, hopefully that's pretty clear. But what if Amazon goes up? Right now, Amazon's at 176. What if Amazon goes to 179 and lands there at expiration? Is that bad for you? Well, remember, as the short call holder, you're only really hurt if the stock price goes above the strike price. Again, we're just focusing on expiration. I know a lot of things happen between now and then. We'll save those for a future project and another time. But right now, just zeroing in on that expiration day, you're only really hurt if the stock price goes above the strike price because that's when the option becomes valuable for the long call side. So as long as the stock stays below your strike, which could be 179 or 177 or 181, 182, 183, 184, it's all the same to you. As long as it stays below the strike price, the stock price, then that's ultimately going to end up in the same spot for you at expiration. So this is why when it comes to a short call option payoff, you see this green profit area at any price below 185 and the profit is the same. You keep the credit you collected on entry. Again, the cost of the option that the long call paid to you as the short call. So in this case, $3.45 or $345 for the entire contract. This is your maximum gain. Okay, but what if things don't work out? What if Amazon rises above 185? Well, that is where things begin to move in the other direction. If Amazon rises to 190, that's not good for you because the long call will exercise, which gives him the right to buy shares at 185. Since this is a naked short call, which again, that simply means it's not covered by another option or you don't have the long shares to cover it like a covered call, that means you will have to go into the marketplace and buy the shares for the market price of 190 then turn around and sell them to the long call holder at 185, the strike price incurring an immediate $5 per share loss on that round trip. Well, what if Amazon rises to 200? Again, not so good for you. It's even worse. Now you're buying shares for 200 and then selling them for 185, a $15 loss. And what if Amazon rises to 250? This is very not good for you because you buy at 250, then you sell at 185. An instant, immediate $65 per share loss. And since there is no cap to how high Amazon can go, your maximum loss is theoretically infinite, which is why you see a negative infinity symbol next to the maximum loss. All right, now let's pause there for a second because I'm willing to bet that there's some skivvies that have gotten shaken up out there based on that last chunk of information. I mean, you might be thinking, Jim, you mean to tell me that with a naked short call, there is no limit to how much money I can lose. Like it's not even a real number, just a never ending stream of infinite losses. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Technically, theoretically, that is true. And you need to be aware of that. Now, how practical that is as an application in the real world where we don't typically transact in infinite dollar amounts. That's a separate question. I actually answered that question in another video, but we'll leave that for a future project. And I'll link it down in the description if you guys want to check it out. But for right now, for our call options for dummies foundation, we will just assume that the losses on a naked short call are indeed theoretically infinite. So without question, 115% of you just clicked off from those last couple of lines. But just in case a few stragglers remain, two final things, and then we'll let you guys loose into the forest. Where is your break-even point on this trade? Again, 
it's going to be where the profit curve crosses the x-axis, which for us here will be the strike price plus the credit collected, or $185 plus $3.45 for $188.45. But second, yes, there is no safety net on your losses. And yes, that means if you sell naked calls, you are going to have to absorb some really big moves against you. That is absolutely true, and don't ever let anyone else tell you otherwise. It's not a question of if, it is a question of when. But look at what else you have. Look at your pop. It's 73%. That means there's a 73% chance that you make at least one penny at expiration on this trade. And also, look at your P50. That's the probability that you make 50% of the credit that you collected at any point during the trade. 84%. Those are some high probabilities. So where did they come from? Well, remember that your strike on this trade is 185 and the stock is 176. If the stock goes down, then that's great. It really helps. But really, you don't need it to go down at all. You just need it to not go up above 185. So anything down the same or even up a little bit against you is all fine and would lead to a profitable outcome. So in other words, with this naked short call, which is a bearish trade, of course, you don't need to be right directionally. In fact, you can even afford to be wrong a little bit directionally and still be profitable on the trade. I mean, is that not kind of crazy? Remember, with long calls and long puts, Right, the potential for huge profits was always there, and that's the biggest selling point of those strategies, the opportunity to cash in big if you get the directional move correct. But man, that's a pretty big if. In a market that is oftentimes, aka always, pretty random and unpredictable, and you don't know what it's going to do, you don't know how it's going to respond to XYZ news event or ABC earnings call or whatever, you buy a call, you need the stock to go higher to make money. You buy a put, you need the stock to go lower to make money. Here, I'm selling a call, and I don't need it to go down to win. In the puts video, the short puts video that you're going to see, I'm going to sell a put, I don't need it to go up to win. That's some pretty crazy stuff and a really, really good foundation for thinking about trades and investments and your overall portfolio in a brand new way if you've never thought about trades and investments in your portfolio like this. Normally, when we think about the market and we think about investing and we think about all those different things, stocks, you know, whatever, we think, man, I've got to get the direction correct. I'm going to buy this thing if it goes higher and make money. I'm going to short this thing. If it goes lower, I'm going to make money, right? We don't typically think, how can I start to involve other elements of, you know, the options world and the market metrics, you know, for my betterment and to help me in a given trade or in a given position to be profitable. That's what short options begin to do. So if you guys want to like, share, subscribe, that would all be amazing. But if you want to learn a little bit more about this, go a little further into short options, then click on the video that's on the screen right now.